All right, happy Saturday, and welcome to Mocha Don is Right. I'm Mocha Don, and someone asked me about prepping, so today we're going to do real, very basic overview of prepping, and this is not prepping for the world to end. This is not prepping if you live in a mountainside compound in Idaho. This is just prepping for everybody, what everybody should do, no matter where you live, whether you're in a, a Manhattan apartment or whether you're in a suburban single family home, whether you're in a condo, no matter what state you're in, no matter where you live, no matter what the laws are, where you are, this is the kind of prepping everybody who is not an idiot will have done. And for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to say it's prepping for seven days. FEMA says three days is the minimum. Uh, FEMA says, what are you prepping for? Well, if you prep for a zombie apocalypse, this is your government. This is FEMA. If you prep for a zombie apocalypse, you'll probably have what you need. FEMA was embarrassed after they said that because while they're correct, they forgot that that means having guns. And oops, FEMA doesn't want you to have guns, but you need a gun. And we're going to talk very briefly about that. But basically, here's the things that you need to, to just be prepped for the kind of thing that they had in Detroit when their water supply was wrecked or in Jackson, Mississippi, when their water supply was wrecked, or in Florida, where they have hurricanes and tornadoes, or in Illinois, where they have tornadoes, or in the West Coast, where we have earthquakes. You know, it's basic stuff that everybody should do. And here's what it is. It's five things. And these are the minimums. You got to adjust these for your circumstances. But the minimum prepping categories are water, food, health, heat, and security. And water is always number one. The reason that water is number one is you'll be dead in about two days without any water. You got to have some kind of water. Another reason it's number one is it's really easy to do. If you and your spouse live in a Manhattan apartment, you can buy three stackable five-gallon containers that are for potable water. Don't buy stuff that's for gasoline or something. Buy containers designed for, you know, with material to, to hold things for human consumption. Uh, potable water materials. And five, three, they're, I mean, they're very small, right? They're little cubes and they stack on top of each other and they end up being about three and a half feet tall. And they hold five gallons each. You fill them up with tap water, you throw a fresh water pill in there and you can find those on the internet. Something designed to maintain your water in a drinkable condition. They sell them there. I think one of them is actually called Water Fresh or Fresh Water. You throw one pill in each five gallons, you seal it up airtight. You also don't have a lot of air in there. You fill the thing full and, and you stack them up and they take up no space in the corner of your closet. That's number one. You got to have one gallon of water per person per day, plus whatever water your animals are going to drink, your pets. If you live on a farm, you might have different water considerations. If you're prepping for two years, you're going to have different water considerations. But anyway, from seven days to, to 14 or 15 days, not a hard thing to put away a gallon of water per person per day, plus what your animals need. Number two thing, and now the rest of these are not necessarily in order, depending on your circumstances. But I put food as number two. You need a minimum, a bare minimum, 1,500 calories per person per day. <clears throat> Obviously, if you have an infant, you put away enough infant formula or enough baby food or enough whatever age they're at to survive for seven days. And seven days is our baseline here. That's not very much. There's a lot of calories in pasta. You boil the pasta in water. If you buy mac and cheese, you stir, you know, you, you stir in the little packet of, of cheese glop and you've got mac and cheese and there are a lot of calories in that. Yeah, it's not the healthiest thing for you in the world, but you're going to survive just fine for seven to seven to 30 days on that. And 1500 calories per person per day is your goal. You can buy Campbell's soup. Uh, you can buy the, the ones that are, you just have to put the soup itself in and nothing else. Or you can buy the ones where you put the soup in and you add a, a can of water, you know, no problem. This is not 
rocket science, but it's 1,500 calories per person per day. Adjust for your infants and extreme toddlers. And of course, you're going to want food for your pets. Yeah, you're worried about that stuff getting old, cycle through it. You go buy Campbell's soup at the store, you take the Campbell's soup you put away, you put the Campbell's soup you just bought in there, and you eat the Campbell's soup, right? Uh, number three is, and this maybe should be number two, is health, right? You need prescription drugs. If you take prescription drugs, particularly if you take a life-saving medication, you have to have whatever period of time you're prepping for, you have to have that on hand at all times. You rotate through it so that, you you know, it doesn't expire sitting in there. But this isn't rocket science. You can get a week ahead of the game, uh, even if you're doing 90-day mail-order pharmacy. You can get seven days ahead of the game. Over the period of about six months, you can probably get a month ahead of the game. They'll usually let you order that stuff two weeks early. So two orders, and you have a month's supply of more than you need. You just rotate it through. You're going to need a good first aid kit. Buy a good first aid kit. Spend 60 to 100 bucks. Get a good first aid kit that has some tools in it that has basically everything you would need in it. Uh, it's going to not have two, typically, they're going to not have two things in them. They're not going to have enough absorbent gauze for significant blood loss. So you can take care of that by buying uh, Kotex Feminine Napkins in the plainest variety. Get the generic, you know, like Kotex Feminine Napkins. Those are terrific absorbers of blood. And then spend 25 to 50 bucks and buy a tourniquet. You can get a decent one. You can get two pack of them online for about 30 bucks at Amazon. But buy, the, buy a quality tourniquet. Know how to use it. The, it's not hard to learn. It, it takes all of an hour. You can watch videos on YouTube that'll teach you. But buy a tourniquet. Buy some plain generic Kotex for blood absorption. Tourniquet for hemorrhage. Get a good first aid kit. It'll have everything else you need in it. The fourth thing I have down here is heat. If you live in a cold climate, you need to be able to stay warm. That's a little more complicated of an issue, but <clears throat> if you have a fireplace that'll burn firewood, you should have some firewood. If you don't have that, maybe you should have a camping heater. You need to be concerned about carbon monoxide. So people in New York in apartment buildings, you have to give this some careful thought. There are, are heaters of various kinds. Some run on diesel fuel, don't really require any electricity. And they will vent to an outside. They will vent out a window. You need to worry about carbon monoxide if you're heating your, your living space. But other than that, you need heat in order to cook. You need to boil water for your macaroni and cheese you put away. You need to uh, heat the soup from the can. You need to have a way to boil water to sterilize things or to sterilize the water itself. I'm assuming you're sheltering in place. You're staying in your own home. So you should have pots and pans. But you need to have those basic heat essentials. And then the last thing is security. Do you need a gun? Hell yes, you need a gun. You're a moron if you don't think you need a gun. Everybody needs a gun. Even if you're a total pacifist, progressive liberal, you know you need a gun. You're sheltering in place. You're in your home. People might try to kick in your door. If things go to hell from a simple power outage, you want to, first of all, secure your door, reinforce your hinges and your latch plates so that your door is not easy to kick in. But then in order to prevent them from working really hard at it, you need to have a gun. You need to have a gun. That's all there is to it. And you need to have ammunition for the gun. And if you hate guns, buy a, a riot shotgun, buy a Mossberg or the, the cheapest pump action 12 gauge riot shotgun you can find online. And one box, 25 rounds, double lot buck, and you'll be fine. You don't need to be, you need to be accurate, but it's easier to be accurate with a long gun than with a pistol. Pump action shotgun with an 18 inch barrel, give you about five to seven shots that's going to do the job, going to keep them from coming through your windows and your doors. And that's all you're really caring about for these purposes. If you're a survivalist or you're someone like me and you've got suppressed AR-15s with short barrels and 
you know, in 6.8 SPC, well, good for you, you know, great for me. But, but at a minimum, you need some kind of gun that you know how to use, and it's easy to learn how to use a pump-action shotgun. Handguns are fine. It's easy to miss with a handgun. Hard to stay proficient with a handgun if you're in a place like New York City or San Francisco. For those people in New York and San Francisco who aren't gun owners now, just buy a 12-gauge pump-action shotgun with double-aught buck. You'll be fine. Also, it'll be legal where you live. That, you know, it's not rocket science. Those are the five things that you, that you need to worry about. It's water, food, health, heat, and security. If you're covered for that for seven days, you're at a minimum level of preparation. Minimum. And you're at twice the recommended preparation level uh, for FEMA. And that's really what everybody should do everywhere as a bare minimum. You can't do that as a bare minimum. You're either so deluded you're living in la-la land, or you're a freaking moron. And if you're a moron, now that you've seen this video, you're not a moron anymore. And if you're a survivalist type or former SOF guy, then you know that you need to do more than that to survive a meaningful problem. But this is for the people who haven't done anything. This is the minimum. And with that, thank you for joining me on a Saturday. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We are desperately trying to grow the channel. We need you to subscribe. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe is the big one. Thank you very much. God bless, and you have a terrific week.